In this section of the class, we're going to talk about using integrals to calculate volume. Okay. Now, so far I've told you that integrals represent an area, and they do. But you'll find out here in a minute that you can also use them to calculate the volume. So formulas that you're familiar with from geometry and stuff like that, like um, the volume of a um, sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, that can all be derived from calculus. In fact, it all was derived from calculus. And so calculus, using these integrals, um, you can generalize them to calculate volume. And I'm just going to work a couple of quick problems to show you the principle involved with that. But before I do that, I want to give you a quick explanation of how you can do this. Okay, um, let's say you have, you know, x, y, like this. This is the x-axis, obviously, and this is the y-axis. And you have some function here, okay, some function. It, let's call it f of x, right, like we always do. Um, and it's defined up here above like this. Now, let's say that you, you took this f of x, and let's say you rotate it about the x-axis. So, let's say you... You have some piece of cardboard here that's in the shape like this, and then you rotate that cardboard all the way around. You now, like if this piece of paper were up here, you'd rotate it around like this. Well, then what you would have is some. You'd have something like that, fairly symmetrical like this. Okay? And then, just to give you a little bit of, of dimension involved, I'm going to try to draw it in three dimensions, and I'm not going to do probably the best job. It would look something like this, and over here you'd have this, okay, but obviously it would be going around like this, and then you'd have something like this, and it'd be kind of on the other side, it'd be kind of going around like this. So this is an example of how you can take a curve and by rotating it around an axis, arrive at some volume. Now it would be very difficult to calculate the volume of this vessel here. Okay, you could fill it with water, sure, and you could, you could figure out what the volume is experimentally, but if you wanted to measure it or to calculate it using calculus uh, or regular old math, it would be really difficult to do because it's got this nice curve to it, and this curve could be pretty complicated. So how do you do that? Okay, well, if you think about it, okay, the distance, by definition, the distance between here and here what is this distance? Well, this is just simply f of x. That's by definition what it means. At every value of x, this is f of x. And over here, this is f of x. And over here, this is f of x. That's what the function does. It tells you what the value of, of f is at, at various values of x. Okay? So if I were to look at the area, forget about volume for a second. If I were to look at the area of this little slice, let's say I slice it right here, and I'm, I'm interested in the area, the area, what's that going to equal to? Well, in general, this is a circle, right? Because you've rotated it around in a circle. So the area of a circle is just pi r squared, right? That's the area of a circle. But I know what r is. This is the radius. Because over here, this would be a radius. So the area would be pi times f of x squared, right? Okay, this is f of x. I rotate it around. It defines a circle in the cross section. So pi f of x squared, that's going to be the, um, the area of this slice. Now, don't you remember back when I told you what integrals really were? They, they calculated the volume, but I said if you have an integral of blah, 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 blah over dx, what you're doing is you're taking these little, these little slices of a graph, and you're letting the slices become really, really, really thin, and this integral is adding them all up. Okay? Well, you can, it turns out you can do the same thing on a bigger scale. I'm going to tell you what the answer is, and 